everyone. Uh, welcome to the Code Warriors event coach training workshop. My name is Adam Sanborn. Uh, I am your uh, event supervisor here for today and uh, through our event in May. Um, if you have any questions during this, uh, you can type them into the chat and I will do my best to read those as we go. Um, or uh, since we're in sort of an audio only setting for the moment during the presentation, I think you can just turn your microphone on and speak up if you feel that I'm missing something. Um, so uh, with that, let us get started. Um, so here's what we are covering here today. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself, uh, then about the program, um, what Code Warriors is, uh, what to expect on uh, the lead up to Code Warriors and on the day of the event itself, um, the specific topics that you'll want to take a look at. I've got a slide that has some excellent resources for you. I know some of you are going to be complete beginners at at uh, being an event coach here. Um, maybe some of you don't have much coding experience at all. If any, that's fine. Um, there are some good resources that you can look at uh, in the next four months. And then at that point, if there are any additional questions about things I didn't cover, I will do my best to answer those. OK. So this is me. I know you can't see me right at the moment, but uh, I may be able to get some video on during the, the Q&A part. We'll see. Um, I teach C Sharp programming and game design. Um, if you're curious, yes, it is the coolest class in the world. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, I teach maths and I put I put maths on purpose. That's the, the British way of uh, writing mathematics. Um, I, I enjoyed that, but once I switched over to teaching programming, I, I just didn't want to go back. So my total teaching experience is about eight years. Um, I spearheaded the AP Computer Science program uh, in the Lance Cruz District, which is uh, my employer for the past six years or so. Um, I'm losing track, honestly. Uh, and um, so I teach that in addition to C Sharp programming. I was able to do that in part because I've also been working for Michigan Virtual part time for about eight years and uh, teaching AP computer, uh, computer Science for them. So having that sort of combined experience, I was able to uh, get something started at my building, and that's been going quite well so far. Uh, I am a gamer, big old nerd, uh, Renaissance nerd though, so I have a lot of different interests, uh, programming being one of many. Uh, I do some acting, which actually is how I got set up um, with uh, the Code Warriors program in the first place. I had a connection, somebody I was in a show with at the, uh, at the Riverbank Theater um, was a CS professor, uh, just by coincidence, and uh, he he sort of knew they needed somebody for this and, and volunteered me. <laughs> um, and I've got two young boys, ages eight and five, who are more avid gamers even than I was at that age, which is saying something. Um, I am brand new to the Science Olympiad program and to Code Warriors. Um, I'm replacing uh, last year's event supervisor who is on to greener pastures. Um, so if there's anything I don't know, uh, they chalk it up to inexperience. We're figuring it out as we go. I'm going to be sticking with the rules and events that was uh, in place last year. And then um, perhaps in future years, if you end up coming back, you may see some changes that, that I'll be implementing. But for now, I'm essentially uh, doing what somebody else set up. Um, and there's my email address. If you, and you can refer back to these slides whenever you would like. Um, I'll get you a link to those. All right. So that was me. Uh, this is you. Your team uh, needs to be organized. You want to understand um, what each person's role is. Um, it's up to you to determine what works well for them. I definitely recommend um, having lots and lots of practice problems and seeing which of your students is is sort of uh, taking a natural leadership role if they're working together um, well. If not, then you want to be coaching them as much as you can. You want to be, you know, correcting their approach. Um, what I say here is you want to train them how to think, not what to think. Um, you, you can only like the thing about programming is programming is like mathematics problem solving. It's about unpacking a problem and breaking it down into its base components. So the more they practice with that and the more you communicate that to them, that you're not telling them how to memorize a bunch of information, you're telling them how to solve a problem, I think the better off you'll be. And then part of your role also is to ask questions if there's something that you're not sure about to contact uh, to me, basically, um, or to go find the information 
uh, about how to solve a problem or the, the issues that your um, students are having, uh, you should bring that to me. Um, I so, uh, am used Adam, to. If I can uh, yeah, go ahead. for a moment here, this is yeah. John Ogden. Yeah. Um, so when uh, event coaches have questions about your event, our preference is that they don't contact you directly. Oh, <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to to uh, help us uh, monitor that. Uh, we have an FAQ system on the Macomb Science Olympiad website. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is uh, people have the opportunity to pose their question uh, and you will be the one answering it. However, we then post the answer on our website sure. and that way all event uh, coaches uh, get a chance to see the same information. And so we we enforce want to enforce that system to try right. to keep things as fair as possible. So so you're still asking me, but the answer goes to everybody essentially. Do I have that exactly. right? Okay. Exactly. Okay. So so what I said is technically not incorrect, <laughs> um, but we're going to make sure that everybody has the answer to any question that you uh, that you ask. All so right. If if people go to the Macomb MacombSO.org yep. website, look for FAQ in the elementary section. That'll be the place where they can ask their questions that they think of after today. So ask questions indirectly, um, not directly. And we'll make sure that we have that covered for you. Cool. See, I'm still learning. All right. Um, so that is your role as I understand it. Um, and we'll be learning as we go. Uh, and we go on. Okay. Uh, what is Code Warriors? I found this cool graphic that I thought fit it really well um, when I did an image search. This isn't our actual uh image for our event but i do think it fits nicely um this used to be known as code ninjas um this so uh a couple years ago i believe and now we have a uh new title of code warriors that was settled on um this is our macomb science olympiad event as you know you're i think you're seeing a bunch of different training sessions today probably many of you um so we have uh events in lots of different subject matter and this is our computer science subject matter um, we've got dozens of schools represented at this event. Um, not sure what that's going to look like this year with obviously a reduction um, due to the pandemic, but um, we're still seeing a fair bit of enrollment uh, and there's a lot of interest in getting elementary students to have their practice with becoming proficient coders and to be exposed to these computer science concepts from a young age. Um, so the work that you're doing, um, I know some of you will have young people who've already seen coding concepts, which is amazing to me. I'm seeing more and more of that as a programming teacher. I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of that getting students at a young age. Some schools are implementing coding classes uh, or coding concepts even in elementary school. And if you're if you're in a district that does that, I think that's excellent. Um, for some of you, your students will have never seen this stuff before and you'll really be working with some some raw talent, some kids who are ready to learn but haven't learned anything yet. This is great for either group. Um, the, the concepts that we're trying to get across here are meant to be as accessible as possible. And so what you're going to uh, be able to do with Code Warriors will be something that students even with zero experience should be able to understand through your coaching and through whatever uh, we're able to provide to you in support. All right. All right. What to expect? Uh, the event itself, we are uh, planning on doing live as of right now. We never know what might change in terms of, um, you know, uh, government intervention or what have you. But uh, we do have the date set, which is Saturday, May 15th. So we will probably be doing the socially distanced live event. We have a number of um, precautions in place for the sake of making sure that everybody is as safe as possible. Um, if it ends up not being a live event, we'll still do that date is my understanding. It will simply be a, a virtual event. Um, uh, so we have we have no plans to to cancel in any event. So uh, that date is set. Um, it is probably socially distanced and live, but we can never say with 100 percent certainty in 2021. Um, it'll be a 30 minute event for the students to compete, which uh, admittedly is not a ton of time, but with the uh, kind of experience that they have, I think they should be able to come right in and attack the problems that we give that we put before them. Um, those problems, one third will be multiple choice. Typically, the type of multiple choice questions that you're going to see and uh, we'll make sure that we have some uh, practice questions and I've got some excellent resources that you can get an idea of it. But mostly what we're looking for is can students look through existing code and 
interpret it and say, what's the value of this variable when this code runs or what gets displayed by this bit of code? So we're looking at code snippets um, and interpreting it. Then the uh, two thirds there, and uh, you can find this, these details in the, the rule sheet also, which I have a link to, um, is them actually solving a problem through writing code problems, uh, write, writing their own uh, programs uh, in small snippets of code themselves. So you can think of uh, the first part is the multiple choice, the second part is the free response. The free response is going to be worth more. So you'll want to be practicing uh, with that quite a bit. And, and what I find is that when it comes to mastering these free response questions, doing that is going to make them experts at interpreting existing code anyway. So I don't think that there's any um, issue with, with mostly focusing on getting them writing code as soon as they can understand how it's done. Um, we're going to be working in JavaScript for the second year in a row. Uh, this was a change from two years ago for those who have been around a while. Um, the reasoning behind this, and I, I do agree with the change that they made. Um, I'm not just inheriting it. I also think it's a good idea. Um, JavaScript, for those who know their, their CS, is a weekly typed language, um, meaning that there's not a lot of focus on uh, declaring specific variables or having particular types to work with when you're writing your code, which makes it more accessible to students because many students get hung up on the idea of, well, I do I declare an integer variable here? Do I declare a double variable here? Do I, I got to make sure I have the right type? And that really just gets in the way of young people trying to uh, understand the process. And our goal is for them to understand the process. So for that reason, we're using JavaScript um, this year. Uh, that's not a forever thing necessarily, but I think it's our best choice right now. Um, and then in the event itself, you'll have one computer for your two students to uh, to work on. So they're going to need to be prepared for that. Make sure that you um, that they're ready to go and organized and used to working together on a single uh, console. All right, and then so that's uh, the event itself. Okay, uh, within JavaScript. Um, we were looking at these particular topics. This is also enumerated in the rule sheet, but these are the ones you should be focusing on with your students. Um, variables, obviously very important. They are sort of the backbone of programming, I would say. Um, being able to store values and use them for displaying, being able to change them, using them for uh, arithmetic operations, that sort of thing. Um, arrays as a collection of values. That is going to be a, a topic that comes up quite a bit, being able to access um, a particular index in an array. Um, if this is all Greek to you right now, that's fine. Uh, this is all covered in some of the resources that I'll share. But for those who know programming already and signed up for that reason, um, I, you're not a stranger to any of these things. So uh, you've got your if statements, um, which are the control structures there. You've got your loops, which are iterative structures. Uh, you can see an example of a very simple loop over here in this example. Um, on the screen right now. And then you've got uh, function calls. And I guess I would add to that um, writing functions, being able to uh, use existing code and write their own function that will be called. But that's essentially what we're always doing here. So those are the topics that uh, our test will cover, our, our event will cover here. Um, I don't even like to call it a test really, but that's the language I inherited. So we'll go with test for now, uh, a challenge for them to do there. OK, so this is what you can expect from um, from within JavaScript, uh, which is covered on the resources we have here. All right, so that's what we're covering specifically. Um, OK, resources. Uh, I went through and got some of the uh, a few different categories of information that will be very useful to you here as you're preparing. Um, as far as learning the basics, teaching your students if they're going to work on their own or if you're somebody who needs to uh, learn this stuff ahead of them and be able to, to teach it with them or even learn it with them. These first two links, W3Schools and Code Academy, and I, I linked you to the particular uh, JavaScript pages of those because they each cover a bunch of different languages. They're both excellent. Um, I, I go and find information on these for my teaching job um, and I teach high schoolers and and I have a ton of experience with this stuff, but I still often like forget something and need to refresh myself and this is where I tend to go. So uh, W3Schools is a favorite of mine. Code Academy is a really good one. Um, find what works best for you, sort of take the students through it and, and decide what you like, but both of them are meant to be 
uh, lessons for beginners through uh, intermediate coders or just reminders for people who have forgotten a particular thing. OK, um, then for specific information on Code Warriors, um, we have the event rules. So I have the link here so you can review it. It covers uh, I'm trying to cover as much of that in, my, in what I'm saying here as possible, but it's nice to have a reference there so you know exactly what to expect. Um, and then this second example, uh, this is a temporary link to this thing, but it is an excellent source. Um, these are 10 practice problems that uh, our previous uh, supervisor put together and uh, it, you can run it. You can see the solutions. These are excellent examples and I would certainly be showing your student these or taking a look at these yourself for the um, as one of the first things that that you do so you know what to expect in terms of of coding. Um, Adam, then, are these yeah. links on the actual website? Um, I've got them on the slides right now and we'll make sure that these slides are available to you. Um, the, and so then the existing links that are on the current um, Code Warriors website, uh, I noticed a lot of them are broken, so these are yeah. not the same links. Yeah, I understand we had some issues with the web hosting um, last year at some point, so these are up to date. Um, this, so this, uh, we will ahead. do a quality check on the website yeah. and, um, and check for those broken links. Thanks for letting us know about that, and we will make sure that these get added as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the most up to date thing I have for the moment, um, but we're going to uh, navigate. We're going to, to migrate the interactive examples to somewhere that I have control over them because right now this is uh, under the control of our former supervisor. And then um, the event rules should be this is this is on the website, so that all should be there for you. Um, so then if you get to the point where your students have nailed the practice examples and they understand the basics, and the examples on W3Schools and Code Academy are maybe a little dry for them. Um, Code Combat is a site that I've included here. Uh, I, I use this with some of my students as an extra activity that's maybe more fun for them. Um, I think it, my opinion is that when it comes to learning coding for a student, part of the reason that it's so attractive to them is because it can be fun. And I think that if you present it to them in this sort of dry, wrote memorization way and they're not actually problem solving and reasoning and doing it in a way that's interesting to them i think you tend to lose them that's my take as a, as a programming teacher so for that reason a site like code combat which has um you, you'll have to get an account and I, I believe you can get free access as an educator or student um it really communicates how we can sort of gamify this study and uh, to me, that is an excellent thing for young people to be doing right now because it supports the field very well. So that's one. There are others, um, but uh, that's that's the resources that that I decided on here. So on that code combat, you mentioned yeah. that it was a free resource for. Is there some type of code or something that we need a class code or anything like that? No, my student, uh, my students who used it in my classroom most recently were able to sign up for an account. Um, it is a somewhat limited account, meaning I believe there's only a certain amount of stuff they can do per day. But um, for free, you will be able to do enough to sort of support their knowledge. They, they have a premium business model as well, so, um, you know. Don't put any credit card information in, but my students were able to get themselves up and running without paying anything. So uh, yours will be the same. Hey, I guess I guess that's what I've uh, what I've got prepared. Uh, what questions do people have? The audio model seems to be working quite well for me here. Um, I'm stuck on my slideshow, so I can't see the chat right now anyway. But but uh, John can dictate anything to me if it's in writing, or you can speak up if there's anything I didn't cover or more you would like to know. So I tried that code combat site, and mm -hmm. when I tried it, it's it wouldn't. It's asking for codes, and um, it's not functioning. Really? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll get another look at that and see if I can follow up with some information. But um, you should be able to sign up for an account there. Uh, I might have provided a link that was not quite complete. That's the one I found this morning, but I didn't. Um, super quality check it but if you google code combat and look at signing up for a new account i think you should be able to find out what you need there we will experiment with that same process as well and and on the presumption that it is possible we'll get the quality link posted <laughs> on the website 
Yeah, and um, that that wouldn't be my first stop. Like that's something for students to use once they have already gone through the uh, uh, sort of basics of uh, of coding. What other questions do you have as event coaches? I see a question here from someone. Just a moment here. I'm uh, I'm on the wrong screen. I see they asked it, but I've got to read it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cutler is asking, are the two students per team from the same school or different schools? I've not learned who my other student is. Um, students on on the on your event team students are from are typically from the same school there are very rare circumstances where that would not be the case so i would say no they're going to be from your school and you ought to be asking your head coach who your students uh your, your child's partner is uh we've got another question it says is there a model of non-programmable scientific is there a model of non-programmable scientific calculator that's recommended? Oh. Uh, I don't think we're going to have anything that's going to require the use of a calculator outside of the programs you'll write. Um, and if you were calculating something, they should be able to write a program to do it. So I don't think a calculator is going to be any part of, of what we're doing here. In fact, I think in the rule sheet, it's... Uh, not permitted. I'm talking off the top of my head here, but uh, John, maybe you can fill me in. Uh, well, you may have to remind me. Do the rules <laughs> do the rules allow an, a non-programmable calculator? Is that why we're talking about this? Do one of the coaches see that on there? Yeah, I possible. So I would say as long as the calculator is non-programmable, you you ought to be in good shape. So, but I don't think it's going to be a necessity. Yeah, uh, in any I, of I don't recall seeing questions that were calculator oriented. So it's more logic okay. oriented. Hi, this is the coach that asked that question. It just says students may bring. Okay. So, so yeah. that's they do not need to bring that or would not need that most. Correct. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a necessity. But if they're uncomfortable with their ability to do some of the the more basic arithmetic in their heads or by hand, if that's a if that's a comfort to them. Um, as far as a non-programmable calculator goes, uh, I believe traditionally anything up to is a TI-83 programmable. Um, I think it is, but truthfully, uh, I, you want a calculator that is simple to use and the students have used before. Yeah. If you're going to bring a calculator, you don't want them learning how to use a calculator on the day of the tournament. <laughs> right. Um, any any non-programmable calculator is pretty much going to be one that doesn't have a full screen output. It's just got that one line of output. That's probably a good rule for you to follow. Um, as as a, a math guy, I can say that pretty confidently. Okay, thank you. Yep. So, so I see a question from Haresh again about the platform that we used for the actual testing portion at the tournament. And I would say um, that's a, a level of detail that you as a, a competitor shouldn't worry about. Uh, um, and it's uh, a detail that I still need to work out with Adam. <laughs> yeah. TBD. Okay, because just so you know, Adam, we worked with this interface last. Um, we did get started. We went pretty far deep into it, and I trained the kids on how to use that other platform. And this link that you provided looks similar to it, so I was just curious if it was the same premise, so that way the kids wouldn't have to relearn a whole new system that well, we already yeah. got started with. So, so my view is that the, I mean, we're still, we're still hammering out the details on some of that, but my view is that one, you shouldn't expect changes from, from last year in terms of the way that the test functions Two, regardless of what interface you're using, you're still looking at, at typing out the code and it runs the same way. So even if they're training in, in one, they should be, you know, comfortable enough to say, okay, click the run button and this is going to go do what I expect. Um, my uh, my high school students, when they're doing their free response questions and for the AP exam and things, they have to uh, write their code by hand, which is <laughs> a real bear, but uh, it helps them to become experts with that. So if you if you really uh, want to challenge your students to know their stuff before they come in, have them write it on paper uh, by all means, and then they can type it into one of your uh, compilers and, and see how it runs for them. We have another question that asks if, if they say they only have one student. Is that okay? And I'll I'll answer this question, mm -hmm. which is 
one student is certainly allowed. And on this event, I could imagine being successful. Uh, we do tend to write our exams or our the, you know the, the the tournament tests to be relatively challenging. And having two students, your brains on things is better than one. Um, but that doesn't mean that a single student can't be successful. Yeah, and that said, I think um, one thing that that uh, we're definitely going to want to carry over from uh, previous years is that we're we're planning to write more questions than they're going to necessarily be able to get through in 30 minutes, because the goal is for them not to run out of questions, regardless of how good they are. <laughs> um, so for that, that reason, true. it may be an advantage to uh, have two students so that they could potentially split up the questions. Yes. In fact, I think it would probably it probably has been common in the past for one student to start on part one and then right. the other student start working on part two. And then at some point during the 30 minutes, they would collaborate. We have another question coming in. I'm waiting to see what it is. Hmm. Um, I'm just going to re-ask the same question. So on the day of the exam, the um, the two-thirds portion where they're doing the writing portion, the coding, mm -hmm. uh, is it safe to say that kind of like the example you provided on that link is what they'll be using? So that way as we work with these kids, this is the same type of interface I should be working with them with? You're talking about on the, uh, the GitHub right now, with the practice questions? Yes, sir. Um, I think that's probably a safe starting point where they have a box to type into, they have a run button. Um, that that is probably safe to say yes. John, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think that's a good answer for now. That's a detail that you and I need to talk about, Adam, right. about how we're going to execute that. Mm -hmm. but, um, that's the but that's, that's a what very I logical answer. Yeah, I th I think that that uh, any any development environment worth its salt is going to be more or less the same as the rest where you have your code it's going to run your code if your code runs and you're going and and because the you know effects come from the code itself and not from the compiler um you're going to get the same result regardless of which system you're using so uh my goal is going to be to set something up that's as close to that as possible because that's very simple to work with which i i like I see that Lisa is typing a question. At least that's what my computer is telling me. So Lisa, if you do have a question, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask it. OK, so my question, I'm new to this. Mm -hmm. So welcome. my question is, me too. thank you, um, <laughs> how to get kids ready uh, in terms of what the session itself is going to look like. and I'm. So the way I understand it, part of it is a multiple choice um, pen and pencil and paper test, right? And then the other part of it is a programming test, or they'll be on the computer. So I'm wondering how to, like, will they be logging in to something? I, so I we'll have the, uh, we'll so have the Adam, if I can, them to go. Adam, l let me take a shot yeah, at this go ahead. question. You've seen many more of these than the zero I have, so yeah. Go ahead. So. So the students will be brought into a room where there'll be, uh, you know, pairs of uh, chairs set up, you know, a pair of seats for each computer terminal. They'll have a okay. workspace uh, where they can, you know, that's their workspace. They'll be given a paper copy of, of their test. And they'll have a zip, the multiple choice portion in the first part is zip grade based, right? So that's yep. like many other events. And then they'll have the computer terminal into which they'll be able to, you know, type their answers. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to remember now, uh, I may not know all the details on this, um, how much information for part two is on paper versus how much of it's on the screen. Uh, and I have to admit, now that I'm saying it out loud, I don't, I don't know the exact details on that. Okay, so I guess my question is to get them set up for the com like the computer part in my practice sessions, am I just like writing code or or 
visiting those websites and yeah and on the um on the w3 schools site and the code academy site they have yep. a number of practice questions okay um i think that would be like having your students solve those together and talk about their solutions to those and then type them in there and see if it's correct or not is probably a good starting point okay um we have those 10 practice questions currently 10 on our uh, uh on that github link um where that's that's going to be moved at some point and then we'll we'll make sure to let everybody know when it is uh my hope is to add some more to that but those are already pretty excellent practice questions for students um ranging from trivially easy uh so that they can get the hang of it up through a little more challenging um and and i i hope to add more into that so that you can use those as sort of a, a practice work environment okay are there any other questions All right. Well, if not, thank you very much for attending. Adam, I'll let you close. Yeah, I, I appreciate your time today. Um, we uh, we have that indirect system. I have the contacts here, but it, but it sounds like for contacting me, mostly you're going to want to use the system on um, uh, our website, macombso.org. Uh, if, if you uh, feel like I might have missed something here or aren't sure on where to get started, hopefully I've given you enough resources there um that you can feel comfortable with uh what you're doing next we've got plenty of time until may and yet it always seems like not enough when we get to the event it's like i wish i had a few more months to prepare um so so don't delay on that uh, this is this is interesting and, and wonderful stuff in a, in a cutting edge field and you're doing so much for these students and getting them started uh, young like this so i commend your efforts there and uh, look forward to working with you going forward